as the angel cries out to the birds, the vultures of the earth, come and gather for the supper of the great God that you should eat the flesh of those who are gathered against the Lord. And I saw the beast, the kings of the earth, and their armies gathered together to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. Then the beast was captured and with him the false prophet who worked signs in the presence by which he deceived those who received the mark of the beast and, by, and those who worshipped his image. These two were cast alive into the lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. And all birds were all the birds were filled with their presence. Zechariah gives us a little more depth and insight into what takes place as Jesus fights the battle of Armageddon. As you and I begin to, to look at what's arrayed there on that battlefield, the, what an army, and what military equipment has been assembled, assembled on the plain of Megiddo, the fleets that sit out in the Mediterranean and the Persian uh, Gulf, they are ready to launch their missiles and their, and their, and their planes. The ground shakes to the beat of marching feet. The skies darken with aircraft and helicopters. Amazing new weapons given to men by the Antichrist are set into place. But they never even get a shot. The Bible says that there's a sharp sword that goes out of the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ. When I used to read this as a young man, I envisioned a, a big sword coming out. But it's the power of the spoken word. The Bible says back in Genesis 1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth uh, was void. And darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was brooding or hovering over the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. And as soon as the spoken word came, boom. The Holy Spirit of God took the word of, of the Lord Jesus and began to act. That's what's going to have happen here at the Battle of Armageddon, the power of the spoken word. The Bible says this about the Lord Jesus Christ, that it is he who holds all things together by the power of his might. Hebrews 1 says, who being the brightness of his coming and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power. He holds all things together. For by him, Colossians says, were all things created that are in heaven and earth, visible and invisible. And he is before all things. And by him all things consist, all things hold together. This is what Zechariah says in chapter 14 as the word comes from the mouth of the Lord Jesus. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will smite all the peoples who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve away while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve away in their holes. And their tongues shall dissolve away in their mouth. We've got 200 million coming from the east. The Antichrist probably having about the same number. The king of the south coming up. We're, we're, we're in excess of 500 million people on that battlefield. And their flesh just dissolves away. And they crumble right where they stand. They never get a shot off. They never fire a missile. They never unleash one bomb. They all die. The Bible says, and the rest were killed with the sword, which proceeded from the mouth of him who sat on the horse. That's a reference, I believe, to the time of judgment, the judgment of the nations that Jesus taught about 
in Matthew chapter 25, where all the people of the earth that are left after this great battle of Armageddon will be brought before him, and he would separate them as the sheep from the goats. The sheep he'll put on his right hand, the goats he'll put on his left. The determining factor of knowing what's a sheep or a goat would be the mark. Anyone who's received the mark of the beast, which is the unpardonable sin during the time period of the tribulation, will automatically be on the goat side and they'll be judged and they will be killed with the sword of him coming out of his mouth. That means every lost person on this planet will die. Every saved person that accepted Jesus Christ that refused the mark of the beast, they will enter in to the millennial reign of Christ. As he will rule and reign from the throne of his father David for 1,000 years upon this earth. The Bible also says that the beast was captured and with him the false prophet. So evidently when he speaks the word and all the armies die, he doesn't let them die. He captures them. He takes them and he casts them into the lake of fire. They're the first inhabitants of the lake of fire. If you die today without Jesus Christ, you won't go to the lake of fire. You go to the place of hell. You will be resurrected from hell at the time of the great white throne judgment you'll stand before the judge the Lord Jesus Christ and you'll be condemned to the lake of fire which the Bible calls the second death the antichrist and the false prophets are the first two inhabitants of this lake of fire I'm out of time but Satan's going to be bound with a great chain He's going to be cast into the bottomless pit, the, the abyss that's in the center of the earth. And I understand that to mean all of his fallen angels and demons, hordes, all of them will be put into that abyss, the bottomless pit, during the 1,000-year-old rule and reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he'll rule and reign from the throne of his father David, in the most wonderful time this earth has ever seen. The curse that was put upon this earth because of sin will be removed. The lamb will lay down with the lion. A small child will be able to play with a poisonous serpent. And men will know war no more. They will beat their swords into plowshares. And a time of true peace will come upon the earth because the prince of peace will rule and reign. The roses will have no more thorns. There will be no more hospitals. Uh, a man that's 100 years old will be considered a mere child. The pain of childbearing will be removed from women. And a population explosion will hit this earth like it's never been. When King Jesus reigns on the earth, it will be the greatest time ever. You and I as the bride of Christ, will help administer the rule of the Lord Jesus Christ during this great time. We'll go out into all the earth helping take people to Jerusalem to hear Jesus speak, to see, and to administer his rule and reign. Don't you want to be a part of that? For that to happen, he needs to rule your heart today. He needs to come, Lord, of your life right now. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for the words. They do grip us. They do sober us and into realizing right where we are on your prophetic time clock. We can sense and we can see, uh, Father, through the prophetic word you've given us that the time is so close. May not one person in this building today gamble with their eternal destiny. May they come to receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. May they come to know him and the peace that comes into their life. May they become 
your children this day. May anyone come who needs to come to the altar to pray for a friend or a family member or a co-worker, fellow student. May your will be accomplished, any that you would have to unite with our church by letter or statement, we invite them to come. The spirit and bride say, come. Let him who's thirsty come. Let all who would come to Jesus come. The salvation is free. And the, debt, and the purchase price of it has been paid by Jesus on Calvary's cross. Thank you for Jesus, and we pray all of this in his name. Amen. Let's we'll stand together. Eric's going to lead us in this hymn of invitation, and as we sing, you respond as the Lord leads. Have that old way. Have that old way. Let's pray. Father, as we heard your message this morning, Father, it rocks us, it disturbs us. Father, there's things we don't understand. But Father, we can't help but have thankful hearts because we feel peace. Because, Father, you stepped down to this earth and you gave us a way out and you saved me. Father, I thank you for that salvation that we don't have to endure that. Father, but we all have friends and families and ones that are close to us, Father, that we just know don't know you through the true salvation experience. And, Father, we pray for those people. Father, we continue to pray for the church. Father, that you'll make the church what it's supposed to be. And Father, as we leave these doors today, may we go be your church. And Father, may we snatch those out of the place of hell, Father, before it's eternal too late. Father, we thank you for what you've done for us. Father, we thank you as you bless us each and every day. Father, just a sweet reminder of the sunshine this morning. Father, that you created that. And you are the artwork of that. And finally, we never lose sight of that. So, Father, of all those blessings, we thank you most for Jesus. We thank you for what he's done on our behalf. 
and we look forward to he comes and returns to get us. But Father, we thank you for all of these things that you've done, and we ask this prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Stop this already or...